Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revisiting Archive, the channel where we explore the fascinating history of the world. In this video, we will talk about Antonio de Oliveira Salazar, the architect of Estado Novo, the authoritarian regime that ruled Portugal for 41 years. Who was Salazar, and how did he shape the destiny of this country and its colonies? Let's find out. Salazar was born in 1889 in a small village in central Portugal. He was a son of an estate manager and a devout Catholic. He studied law and economics at the University of Coimbra, where he became a professor and a prominent member of the Catholic Centre Party. He was elected to the parliament in 1921, but soon resigned, disillusioned by the instability and corruption of the First Republic. In 1926, a military coup overthrew the Republican government and established a dictatorship known as the National Dictatorship. Salazar was invited to join the cabinet as the Minister of Finance, but he refused at first, demanding full control over the budget. In 1928, he accepted the offer and began to implement his economic policies, which aimed at balancing the budget, reducing the public debt, and promoting national development. He achieved remarkable results, turning the chronic deficits into surpluses and restoring confidence in the currency. Salazar's success and popularity earned him the trust of the president, General Oscar Carmona, who appointed him as the Prime Minister in 1932. Salazar then proceeded to draft a new constitution, which was approved by a referendum in 1933. The constitution established a corporatist and nationalist system of government, which Salazar called the new state, Estado Novo. The new state was inspired by conservative and autocratic ideologies, such as fascism and integralism, but also by Catholic social doctrine and traditional Portuguese values. Salazar rejected democracy, socialism, liberalism, and colonialism, and defended Portugal's role as a pluricontinental nation, with its overseas territories as extensions of the mainland. The new state was characterized by a strong executive power, a rubber stamp parliament, a cooperative chamber, a single party system, a secret police, a state controlled media, and a censorship apparatus. Salazar was the undisputed leader of the regime choosing his own ministers and overseeing all aspects of the administration. He also served as the Minister of War, Foreign Affairs, and Defense at various times. He was a staunch ally of Francisco Franco in Spain, and recognized his nationalist government in 1938. He kept Portugal neutral in World War II, but joined the NATO in 1949. He also maintained the Anglo-Portuguese alliance, which dated back to the 14th century. Salazar's regime faced several challenges and crises both internally and externally. In 1936, a group of dissident military officers attempted a coup against him, but failed. In 1945, the opposition parties formed the Democratic Opposition Movement, which demanded free elections and civil liberties, but were repressed by the police. In 1958, General Humberto Delgado ran against the regime's candidate in the presidential election and gained significant popular support, but was defeated by fraud. He later fled the country and was assassinated by the secret police in 1965. In 1961, India invaded and annexed the Portuguese enclaves of Goa and the Mawad Diu, ending four centuries of Portuguese presence in the subcontinent. In the same year, the Portuguese colonial war began, as nationalist movements in Angola, Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau fought for independence. The war lasted until 1974 and consumed a large portion of Portugal's resources and manpower. Salazar's health deteriorated in the 1960s, and he suffered a severe stroke in 1968, which left him incapacitated. He was replaced by Marcelo Caetano, who tried to reform the regime and negotiate with the African rebels, but faced resistance from the hardliners and the military. Salazar died in 1970, unaware of his removal from power. He was buried in his hometown, where his tomb became a pilgrimage site for his supporters. Salazar's legacy is controversial and divisive in Portugal and his former colonies. Some admire him for his economic achievements, his moral integrity, his defense of national sovereignty, and his preservation of Portuguese culture and identities condemn him for his political repression, his social backwardness, his colonial obstinacy, and his denial of human rights and democracy. He has been ranked as one of the greatest and worst Portuguese leaders in history, depending on the source and the criteria. He has also been compared to other dictators, such as Franco, Mussolini, and Hitler, but also to other statesmen, such as Churchill, De Gaulle, and Gandhi. What do you think of Salazar and his regime? 
Do you agree or disagree with his vision and actions? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Revisiting Archive. And as always guys, keep revisiting the archive.